And what's funny is it got me thinking and I was like, you know, I don't really organize my home. And I thought, why don't I organize all the time? And then I realized it's because I don't have a lot of stuff. So you have made the decision that you want to own less stuff. So what are some ways you can make that happen? The first one is pretty basic and it is just to start decluttering your home. Now it's easier said than done in most cases because it is sometimes hard to let go of the things that we are used to having in our homes. Decluttering is very much a muscle. So the more you do it, the easier it is to continue doing and you build up that muscle and it gets so much easier to let go as time goes on. But um, one thing that I would recommend doing is decluttering regularly. So when I say declutter regularly, I don't mean to declutter your whole home every single day. So not something that's gonna just take over your mind and you're going to think of letting go of everything in your home all the time. It's more so the mindset that you're able to let go at any given moment and that you are okay questioning the things you want on a regular basis. Maybe I'm putting laundry away and I come across a shirt in the kid's closet or in my closet that I haven't worn, I will grab that shirt and I will immediately put it into a donation box or bag. As I'm picking up kids' toys and I notice that there is a toy that they're not playing with, I will go ahead and declutter that out immediately. Now, I will always, always ask my children and include them in decluttering their possessions. So I will never just declutter something that is theirs without asking them first and without making sure it's okay with them and letting them make the final decision. So basically just have a bag or box in your front closet or like a closet by your front door or really any closet that is easy to just throw a book in, throw a piece of clothing in, throw something in that you're not using anymore. And then when that box gets filled up or that bag gets filled up, you can drop it off at a donation center. It helps build up that decluttering muscle on a regular basis. And for me, it helps the decluttering process not get so overwhelming. Um, doing like a whole house declutter can be a little overwhelming sometimes instead of just like here and there finding things and just doing small declutters here and there. Now, if you're new to minimalism, you might need to do a very big declutter first and then the small declutters after you've done that big purge. So limit the amount of storage items in your home and if possible, even storage units that you're renting. In 1984, there were 6,600 storage facilities in the United States. And now there are approximately 50,000. Self-storage industry is a huge industry that is getting paid every month by families who have so much stuff in their homes, they now have to go and rent out these storage units to fill more stuff. Now, in some cases, I can understand where maybe you need to store a boat or an RV or something that you can't store in your driveway or in your house. But in a lot of cases, we use these storage units to just store stuff that we don't really want to mess with. And it's just kind of an out of sight, out of mind idea of just, you know, I'm just gonna put these in the storage unit and I'm not gonna think about it, but every month we're paying for it. So limiting storage items is such a big part in owning less. This could also be for the stuff in your home. So in garages, closets, attics. So think about like holiday, seasonal decorations, Christmas items, things that you're probably pulling out at this time right now. I used to have three or four large, was it two or three? I don't know, maybe like three large to medium size storage containers full of like holiday things. So like uh, Easter baskets, um, Halloween baskets, Christmas decorations, ornaments for the tree. It was a lot. And now I have simplified it down to just one large bin. So it's one large bin that holds Easter baskets for the kids, their Halloween baskets, um, the Christmas decorations that we have, which is basically just our tree and just a few um, like sentimental ornaments that we have. And that's just one box now. Um, it was overwhelming when I would open up my little closet that we keep that stuff in. It was so many boxes. And honestly, it brought me more stress than joy to pull out these holiday things because I had to store them for most of the year. And so now we keep it very simple and it has helped our home tremendously to just have less stuff that we're storing. Now, I'm not against 
storing things. Like I hold, um, I hold on to some kids clothes, like hand-me-downs, because I save a lot of money by doing hand-me-downs for my kids. In a lot of situations, it's good to store a couple things in your home that you are actually going to use. But narrowing it down definitely helps us own less stuff and helps us maintain a simpler home. So in the storage category, I wanna talk about just in case items versus just for when items. So this mindset helps me a lot. We have our just in case items that we will use just in case. It probably won't happen, but we're gonna keep it just in case. And then we have our just for when items. We know we're gonna use these things. It makes sense to store them. So a Christmas tree, just for when item. I'm going to use it every year. Um, Hand-me-down clothes for my kids, just for when item. I'm going to use those as they grow. A just in case item might be something that someone gives me and I'm gonna hold on to it just in case I come across a time that I need it. And I'm holding on to these things just in case the time arises. Um, now, I think that everyone's just in case and just for when items are they vary, they're different, depending on your lifestyle and your family and everything. Definitely figure out the difference for you personally. For me, someone might say a just-in-case item would be batteries and flashlights and things if the power goes out. For me, I would consider that a just-for-when item because at some point in my life, my power is going to go out and I'm going to be very grateful to have some flashlights and some batteries to and some candles to like light up my house if the power goes out but someone might consider that a just in case item because it's like an emergency item but for me i would say it's a just for when where we live if a bad storm comes through it's pretty regular to lose power if we get hit with a really bad storm especially in the springtime so that makes sense for us so it all depends on what your lifestyle is so figuring out what's your just in case item and what's a just for when item will help you figure out what is actually worth holding on to for storage Watch out for your exposures and things that get you to buy things and maybe aren't the best influences on you. So for instance, if you are watching someone who constantly does shopping hauls and um, seasonal decorating and stuff that's just going to kind of put in your mind that you need more, you know, limit those out because you don't need the influences coming in that are telling you to buy these things that are kind of making you feel like you're less than because you don't have these things, it's best to just cut those influences out of our lives. So think social media, certain websites, anything that's kind of influencing your mindset on what you think you should own. A lot of times it takes just a little bit of time of avoiding these things in order to break the old habit of mindless consumption and build new habits of intentional purchasing. Take advantage of multi-purpose and multifunctional items. So for instance, instead of having a bunch of different lotions and oils and stuff, just use one body butter or one lotion. And for your skin and your hair, use coconut oil or something that you can kind of use the same thing for different purposes. Or use multi-purpose kitchen items or kitchen gadgets so that we have less stuff to maintain and things can be used in different ways. This is my favorite one. If it's not a definite yes, then it's a definite no. This one has helped me a lot recently, actually. Um, when I have been going through, lately I've been going through um, some memory things and sentimental things that I was letting go of. And it helped me kind of have an easier time when I came to the conclusion that if it's not a definite yes, it's a definite no. And if something is kind of weighing on me or kind of holding me down in a way or I feel obligated to keep it, then I need to let it go. Like we tend to put so much on ourselves in these expectations and obligations that we totally do to ourselves and we don't have to. I think naturally we know what we want and we know what we like and the key is to stop convincing ourselves to keep something and to own something when we know we don't really want it. When you are decluttering, look for your definite yeses. Those are the items to keep. Stop accepting things into your home that you would not buy with your own money. If someone is offering something that they don't use anymore and they're offering it to you, it's okay to say no thank you. It's okay to say no, I don't, I don't need it. Don't feel obligated to take something into your home that you don't need. When it comes to receiving gifts, um, I believe that we should have open communication with our friends and family when they're wanting to give gifts to our family and to our 
children. Hopefully they will respond with respect and respect your boundaries. I've had a wonderful experience with just being open and communicating with friends and family about what my family needs or what my kids would like for gifts instead of just accepting things that they're not even gonna use. If we have open communication about receiving gifts, then it will greatly help the flow of stuff coming into our home be way more intentional. Try not to fill your cabinets, closets, drawers, storage areas in your home to 100% capacity. Leave empty space in your cabinets. Don't feel the need to fill it just because there's extra space in there. This even goes for empty rooms in your home or even rooms in your home that are maybe not so full of furniture or just a little more empty. We don't have to fill every corner of our home with stuff. We've been programmed to think we do, but we don't. I hear people talk about how stressed they are and how they have so much in their home to organize and their home is so cluttered, they need to organize it more. And what's funny is it got me thinking and I was like, you know, I don't really organize my home. And I thought, why don't I organize all the time? And then I realized it's because I don't have a lot of stuff. When you have less stuff, you don't have to organize. It's actually quite simple. So if I don't have a closet full of stuff, if my storage areas are not filled to the max, there's not much to organize. Of course, it is always my intention for you to receive inspiration on this channel and just some ideas to maybe help you think like outside the box a little bit and hopefully receive some inspiration about how to just own less and have a simple, more intentional home and life. I post weekly on here and I hope you thoroughly enjoy it. Sending all of my light and all my gratitude and I hope you guys have a beautiful week. Until next time, take care.